welcome to next game sortie series. Here we are on day two and I was able to manage a full run today and learn quite a bit more about what's entailed here. So let's go ahead and delve right into it. First, I've learned that your key items stay with you on future runs. So the key and the shard that we earned yesterday were still there when I entered this run. Due to this, I never saw the brown chest that dropped it by killing Aqux mobs yesterday and I did not see the key item from the chest at gate A. Now it seems you can pick up from where you left off on a previous run, making it so that soloers especially can use multiple runs to buff up before taking on a boss, which should make the bosses more manageable in this situation. Now what it appears is if there are seven coffer triggers in zone A. Now what exactly triggers them is still being debated, though we know that opening the A door and killing the mini NM in zone A both trigger two of these. Now for the others, I've seen everything suggested from types of damage, such as magic, weapon skill, etc., to casting self-enhancing spells. Now I put many of these theories to the test in my run, and many were unsuccessful, so there is clearly some more to be learned here. Now the important takeaway, though, is that there are four key items that you want to obtain in Zone A. The key seems to open doors. The shard seems to allow access to that zone's boss area. The plate allows you to use the fast travel device, and my guess is the metal key item is what weakens the boss and makes him more manageable, but we're going to have to go ahead and wait and see if that holds true. So today, my goal was to try and find the other two of these key items that we did not acquire yesterday. Sadly, I was entirely unsuccessful, but I did make it all the way to map 4, and perhaps by me showing you the things that didn't work for me, we may be able to get closer to how to obtain these key items. So my run started with the southern part of the map, just like it did yesterday, and killing all the AQX mobs there. After killing them all, I got a single blue chest to drop, which had 100 gallon free in it, and that's it. It spawned after I killed the mob with a magic weapon skill. Now the total time to clear this entire section was about 10 minutes, and I had about 4,000 DPS as I achieved that. Now I was trying lots of different things to trigger chest in this first part, so my DPS is a bit lower than it normally is, and it picks up when we go further into the run. Now in this section, I tried multiple skill chains, melee kills, light and dark skill chain kills, magic burst kills, pure magic kills, resting for a few ticks, buffing myself, and feebling the enemy. None of it triggered anything in my case, but keep in mind, I do already have the shard and key key items. Then I headed for the northern area of this map that I largely skipped yesterday and killed all the AQX mobs here. Now just like with the mobs in the southern area, these appear very weak to skill chain and magic burst damage, so work those into your strategy for quick kills. By doing this here, I was able to get my DPS up to 4500 and finish off all the AQX mobs in this section in only 8 minutes. Now doing so seemed to have finally spawned the abject Abdella mob that failed to spawn for me yesterday, so I took the opportunity to take that NM on and see what the fight was like. Now overall, it has much more hit points than a standard Trask mob, but didn't appear challenging in any way, and I was able to cut through him in about a minute. Now once it died, a red chest appears, and opening it completes one of our treasure coffer objectives. Surprisingly though, opening it did not give me a sapphire, as others have reported. In fact, some have even reported getting two sapphires, but all I got was 500 gallon free. Now with all of map 1 now complete, we head to map 2. Now we still do get a chest for opening the A door, but it only contains the Gallum Free since we already possess the A key item. Now yesterday we skipped all of these leeches, but today I chose to take them on to see if we could unlock any more key items by doing so. I once again tried all the different methods I had heard for triggering the coffer and sadly again, none succeeded. It ended up being a big waste of time as there is many leeches in the lower and upper parts of this room. It took me a total of 14 minutes to clear this entire large room, with my overall DPS now being around 5,000. Also, similar to the AQX mobs, the leeches took great damage from both skill chains and magic bursts, so work those into your strategy for quicker kills. Now this brings us to the east side of map 2, that has more AQX mobs in it. Now, an odd thing happened when I got to these. My magic burst started hitting for under 10,000 damage, instead of well over 20,000 damage, on the first three AQX mobs that I killed. However, skill chain damage was still good. In fact, it was even higher, reaching as high as 90,000 damage for a Radiant skill chain. So for this section of AQX mobs, I switched tactics and did a four-step light skill chain to cut through them quickly in only six and a half minutes with the DPS 
once again being around that 5000 DPS number. Sadly, this brings us to the end of map 2, and we have no additional key items. We've cleared all of the mobs on map 1 and 2, and I do not see any additional NMs that have spawned or anything on wide scan, so all we can really do is head on to map 3 with the 15 minutes that I have remaining. Now on map 3, you immediately will encounter Hecti type mobs. I killed just one of these to get a feel for the weaknesses. It was a level 120 mob, and though my skill chain damage was decent, my magic burst damage did 35,000 damage, so it seems that unlike the previous group, you may want to focus on magic burst damage on the Hecti kills as opposed to skill chains. Now I will kill more of these Hecti's in tomorrow's run, but I wanted to explore more on this new map 3 and see if I could get one of those two remaining key items. I continued to run around the map, and though I did find other D gates, I found no other items of interest other than two doors that both appeared to lead to map 4. I've marked them here on map 3 for you. Now I was down to just about 10 minutes left at this point, and I wanted to get to map 4 at I-5, as I've heard if I casted self-enhancing spells up there that I would complete one of the coffer objectives. Now I was on the southern part of map 4 due to the door that I took into map 4, so I would need to trek through the entire map in 10 minutes to pull this off. Now, up until map 4, I have been able to use just sneak for all of the previous mobs and not getting aggro. But here on map 4, we encounter elementals, which did not also not require invisible, but umbrals that did. Now, I was low on time, and I had not intended to pull any umbrals, but since I only had sneak up, an encounter occurred. And I'm glad that it did, as the umbrals are much different than any of the previous mobs in terms of difficulty. They continually use an ability called Terminal Bloom, that is an AoE Paralyze and Doom ability, and the Paralyze is very potent. This makes it so it's very easy for Trust to die, and not to get Doom off themselves and you in time. It also makes it incredibly difficult for your Holy Waters to activate. I was able to successfully kill the first one that I aggroed, but the second gave me quite a bit of trouble, and I ended up using Majin Galkri at the end to finish him off and to ensure that I would not die to Doom. Now you'll definitely want to use caution when fighting these. I will take on a few more of them tomorrow as well, just to get a more familiarity with them. Now after I got back up, I headed to the I-5 location with Sneak and most importantly Invisible up now. Sadly, once I got there and casted all of the Ninja and Warrior buffs, I received no coffer credit. I then went and grabbed an Elemental that was nearby and pulled it to the spot and kept removing my buffs to see if possibly my trust buffing me would count. Sadly, once again it did not. I did, however, allow me to see that the weaknesses of the elemental aren't actually as strong as some of the other mobs. All forms of damage ended up being very poor, with weapon skills doing 2 to 3,000 damage, skill chains were doing around 5,000 damage, and magic bursts ended up doing around the 15,000 damage mark. That is sadly the end of my run. I was unable to get any additional key items today. We'll be at it again tomorrow to see what it is we can accomplish. Now tomorrow, I intend on killing the Leech and M again, and then trying to focus on the map 3 mobs to see if killing those yields any additional results. I will also be using the other door to map 4 to see if just using the other door helps with the key item situation with buffing yourself at the I-5 location. That's going to be it for episode 2 of the Sortie series. I hope you're finding this helpful. If this is your first visit to my channel and you're enjoying the content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button under the video and the bell icon next to it to be notified of my future videos are released. Thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.